Hey everyone, welcome back to Untangled Vines, redefining the rules of work. Today, I'm actually taking a presentation that I did for a speaking event earlier this week, and I'm turning it into a YouTube video because I feel like this would be beneficial for anybody trying to create an engaged remote workforce. So as you can see on the screen here, the title is exactly that, how to create an engaged remote workforce, guidance from experience and lessons learned along the way. I am your presenter, Zach Wright, founder and CEO of Grapevine Software. And this little cutie right here is our mascot for Grapevine, which is an AI animation of my dog, our dog, Zola girl. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm talking about today is how to create a remote workforce that is engaged. And this might not be your specific or typical approach to building an engaged workforce. And I think you can see that from the agenda topics here. So clarity, transparency, and intentionality. So let's go ahead and dive into clarity. Clarity focuses on ensuring that communication, whether it's in the form of goals, expectations, or feedback, is presented in a way that is easily understood. It minimizes the potential for confusion and misinterpretation, especially in a remote work setting where face-to-face -face interactions may be limited. So whenever we're speaking about clarity and remote work, there's three things that I want to call out here. The first one is you want to have a clear remote work policy. Now, this is where you establish and communicate a clear remote work policy that outlines expectations, guidelines, and protocols. This framework, or this provides a framework for remote work, and it helps set expectations for all team members. Right, We have a blog post out there on our website, grapevinesoftware.io, and it is specifically helping you create a successful remote work policy, key considerations and employers or for employers and employees. So some of the topics that we run through in that blog post is the clarity of communication, performance metrics, technology and security, flexible policies. You also want to think about the employee's setup, workspace setup. You want them to understand communication etiquette task management, regular check-ins, talk about time management, disconnecting, wellness initiatives, right? So some of those are the typical things that you talk about whenever you're talking about an engaged workforce. But I recommend taking a look at that blog post. I'll tag it in the description here. Now, we've touched on this a little bit, but clear communication charter. I first learned of a communications charter whenever I had my interview for the podcast uh, with Tammy Bielen from Workplace List. Workplaceless? I think I said that right. So what is a communications charter? This is where you're defining the communications that outline or, or the channels that outline how you want your employees to interact. So you are outlining prefer preferred channels, response times, guidelines for various types of communication. This is going to help streamline communication and avoid misunderstandings. People know where to look uh, to receive information and important updates. They also know how to get in contact with some other people or, or, or people in general, sorry. And the goal with the communications charter is to, again, provide that clarity for your employees. For example, what is urgent? What is considered urgent? The The example that Tammy Bielen gave was <laughs> we, our jobs aren't life and death. Right. So if there's a misspelling on the website, that's not urgent. Don't reach out to me on my personal cell phone because there's a mistyping or there, there's a typo on the website. Now, if it's the end of the quarter and a client is make or break and they're thinking about going a different direction, let's go all hands on deck. But without a communication charter or clearly identifying how you communicate, how are you going to know where to go, right? So that's communication charter. 
document standardized work processes. So documenting and sharing standardized work practices or pro processes to ensure consistency in how tasks are carried out. This not only provides clarity and procedures or own procedures, but also facilitates collaboration among remote team members. Now, one of the things I want to do on each section is tell you how to implement these or how you can implement these. So whenever it comes to a remote work policy, you wanna clearly outline those expectations, the tools and guidelines. You wanna formalize that into a document um, or an interactive approach wherever you're storing your, your policies, right? In Grapevine, we have a specific human resources page that you can click on and add your documents there. But further than that, you also, want to share this you want to enable people on it you want to make sure that they understand it have a have a group meeting have individual meetings have team meetings to go over what the remote work policy means to them if they have any questions so on and so forth now the other thing is communications charter how do we implement that you want to define the communication norms platforms and response times um so whenever we're talking about this we're talking about in real time, are we using the chat feature in emergency times? Are we actually using people's cell phones in emergency times outside of the office or hours outside of the office working hours? What, how do we approach that? Right. It's just really being clear about how you communicate. The third part is standardize processes, document workflows and ensure uh, easy, easy accessibility. Don't just document them. It goes back to what I was saying. Don't just document them, but share them with the team, enable employees to learn them and also refer back to them. When somebody comes to you with a question, if you have that document uh, process or if you have that process documented, make sure to send them that. Explain why we do it like this. Share them the document or video with it or both and just make sure that they have that understood. Okay, the goal of clarity, just to finalize this section here, the goal of clarity is to create an environment where remote work members have a clear understanding of expectations, processes, and communication channels. This in turn promotes efficiency, it reduces errors, and enhances overall engagement of your workforce and your team members. So that is clarity. So let's go ahead and go to transparency. I'm going to take a sip of my mushroom coffee right now. I still drink coffee. Don't worry, but <laughs> let me get a sip of this. Okay. So transparency for an engaged workforce. Transparency is going to focus on providing clear visibility into the organization. And, and it's going to involve this per this first one, just what I said, visibility into the organization. So we're talking about actively sharing updates, goals, and progress to ensure that every team member has a clear understanding of the big picture. This is especially crucial in a remote work setting where physical separation can lead to information gaps, right? That's one of the big reasons why we're building Grapevine. And it's my opinion that many leaders underestimate their employees' ability to process information when creating visibility, you're showing a couple of things. You're showing your employees that you trust them and you're reducing the potential of disruptive politics in your workplace or disruptive silos, right? So that's visibility into the organization. The second one, deliver consistent and useful, keyword, useful communication. So establish regular and consistent communication channels this includes updates on projects, company news, any changes that may impact the team. You want to communicate that early, communicate it often, and provide them updates. Make sure that the, communi the communication is not just frequent, but also relevant and valuable. So this is where you're going to leverage your communication charter to let employees know where they can go to learn more about specific topics or send messages to get faster, the, the fastest response. It's all about clarity and transparency to help have more engaged workers in a remote workforce. Okay. So create a knowledge shared or a shared knowledge culture. This is what I've done in most of the organizations that I've been a part of. Every organization that I go to seems to 
either withhold information or have the intentions to share the information, but never actually follow through on it. And I think it's because it can be daunting. And again, we, we have a document, well, not again, but we have a document repository in Grapevine and anything that is shared, as long as it's public, can be viewed and search in the internet or the entire Grapevine platform. So with that being said, you creating a, a shared knowledge culture, you want to encourage the sharing of information and knowledge among team members. This can be facilitated through collaborative tools, Grapevine, <laughs> knowledge sharing sessions, and organizational culture that values open communication. Again, how do we implement this? Visibility, regularly share company updates and achievements. Remote employees are in need of visibility more because they can't overhear something in the office or get updated by passing someone in the hall. You need to make sure you create ways to constantly update remote employees through reports, dashboard, company events like all hands, update videos, et cetera. You get creative too. I remember whenever I was working in my previous position as sales operations and, and engineering director, I I still handled the OKR process and we were an enterprise video company. So I leveraged our tool to present updates and what, what it, it ha there's, there's benefits twofold, right? Because if you are updating your team through that video and maybe documentation, right? If you follow our process with clarity, you'll have both of those. And when somebody comes to you, and ask you a question, you can share that video. And one, it helps them out. Two, it provides you a way to continue working on what you need. So they watch that video and typically nine times out of 10, whenever I sent that video over to the employee, they watched the video and they we didn't have to have a meeting anymore, right? Now, it's, it's, it's not that we don't wanna connect, but we don't wanna repeat ourselves so much like, we want to be able to have this repository because that's the other part of it, where if you use Grapevine, you're able to have that repository and you're able to search and find without even having having to reach out to somebody, as well as our AI feature and our chat functionality. It, it will help you find those certain things. So think about that. Okay. So communication, whenever it comes to consistent and useful communication, you want to establish regular updates and feedback loops. My favorite quote on communication is the biggest problem with communication is assuming that it's happened, right? So make sure you have various ways to communicate to teammates from tools to cadences, like team meetings, one-on-one -on -one chats, and, and, and an intranet, which is what we also provide at Grapevine. But having those that structure mixed with the various ways of communication is going to help solidify this into your organization. The last one, knowledge culture. Encourage information sharing through collaborative tools. Lead by example. So start, because if you don't start, then the employees don't know. If you don't start as a leader, then employees don't know how far they can go, right? How, what can they share with the company? What can they not share with the company? Your behavior is going to help set that as well as your remote work policy. But having a knowledge management system and internet are keys to building a knowledge culture. Make your details to the business available to others. Also make sure to keep your documents updated so employees can have confidence when they search for information. Okay. Grapevine solves with that. I know obviously we're biased, but this is why we are building these things because I worked hundred percent remote at the last company and a little bit of the company before. And these are the problems that I wish was, were solved, right? Now, the goal of transparency is to create a work environment where information is not withheld, but shared openly. This is what we talked about before. This is going to promote trust. It's going to enable better decision making because you have more information on how to choose the right decision. And it's going to enhance the overall sense of belonging for remote team members, which we know in a remote environment remote employees sometimes feel lonely or they feel isolated. So get them involved, keep them updated, have that structure. So that's transparency. 
let's go ahead and dive into intentionality. So intentionality is a, is a specific word that I use often whenever it comes to remote work. Intentionality is going to focus on purposeful actions and planning to cultivate a robust remote work environment. And that's going to involve building a strong remote foundation. You want to actively invest in training, development, well-being of your remote team members. This includes onboarding processes, operational cadences that instill company culture and values. Whenever you're thinking about building a strong foundation, it's also going to include that remote work policy. It's going to include the communications charter. It's going to include what the next subject here is, is right infrastructure. But before we go to point two, you want to start asking yourself these types of things. How can you incorporate company values into your culture through rewards, recognition, feedback? In Grapevine, we have an option where you can provide feedback and also attach it to your core values. So now you're not only giving feedback, rewards, and recognition to your employees, you're attaching it to what you what you want your culture to be. Other employees will see that and start to act accordingly to that because they want to get recognized as well. You also want to think about how to bring employees together even remotely. You don't always have to do an on-site or an off-site to bring the team together just because you're remote, right? You can have virtual team meetings. You can have skip level meetings just to have a chat. The CEO comes and talks to the people on the floor. They come and talk to people doing the work versus managing and leading, right? You want to ask those types of things. Coffee chats are another thing where you can pair up people or have a random simulator, put in the names of your employees, have a random simulator say, okay, Zach is going to hang out with Tom on this coffee chat today, you know, and just have once a week or, or once a month. You, you get to decide what's best for your culture. Okay, now we're going to go to bullet two, which is right infrastructure for remote needs. Making intentional decisions about the tools, technologies, and support systems needed for seamless remote collaboration. This is important. This is going to ensure that the team has access to the resources required for, for effective work. Now, again, we are biased, but Grapevine is going to offer you a plethora, a multitude of things. So you think about the, the different tool stack that you have now, Grapevine is going to consolidate all that. And just imagine having everything or, or almost everything in one spot whenever it comes to communication, collaboration, tracking and measuring performance, and then connecting and building culture with your, with your team in your company, right? So think about that be very specific and maybe even before you go on that adventure of trying to figure out which tool is the best tool for your company have a come together moment with your team not just the leaders because i think that's where there's a misconception the leaders feel like they're getting the right information they feel like they have the right tools but really the people who are doing the work need to have their voice heard too right? That's almost more important, if not equally important. Okay. The last one here is operational structure and knowledge management. So now we talked about knowledge sharing or shared knowledge, but now we're talking about knowledge management. So design intentional operational structures, including clear roles and responsibilities, reporting mechanisms, and knowledge sharing practices, remote work policy. Again, this is going to cover a lot. Now, the intention or this intentional approach fosters a sense of purpose and order in the remote work setting, right? And, and, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in how to implement. So let's, let's go to the structured approach. You want to implement clear structures for communication, goal setting, and feedback in the, in the remote setting, right? And, and what that really is saying is, are we a house of cards or are, are we actually built on a foundation that is a combination of the remote work policy, the uh, communications charter, allowing employees to see into and into the business and have visibility into the business, and then having the right operational structure in addition to the right infrastructure. All these things come together. Cultivating culture. You, you want to actively reinforce the company culture through intentional initiatives. That's where we talked about being able to give feedback 
and add the culture there, you're you're pushing for the behaviors that you want to see within your organization. And you also want to give that feedback, reward and recognition to the employee so they know that their efforts are being seen and heard and and it's and it's driving a purpose to that employee. Okay, connection prioritization. Emphasize intentional efforts to connect remote employees and address potential isolation. So we talked about that a little bit, but in Grapevine, we have a virtual office break room that anybody can go into and it will send a notification to other teammates. So that isolation goes away because now they have, just like you have in the office where you need a little bit of a break. So you go to the break room, you get some water, you get some coffee, you maybe have a snack. You're going to talk to the other people who are coming in there, right? Well, the virtual office break room or the virtual office, <laughs> I can't even talk, the virtual break room in Grapevine is going to help create that spontaneity and help people who feel isolated to be able to connect to one another without this whole skew or, or, or scheme to have to go through setting up a meeting with somebody just so you don't feel lonely, right? Okay, the last one, the last bullet point before we go to the next slide and talk about the goal is development opportunities, offering deliberate opportunities for skill development and career growth. Now, I like to refer back to the job characteristics by Hackman and Oldham. And the reason that I refer back to that is because there's a moderating factor called growth need strength that impacts the employee's satisfaction, engagement, and motivation in an organization. And so what growth needs strength means that the company is matching the level of need for growth that the employee wants. For example, I used to manage the sales engineers at the last company I worked for, and most of them did not want to be managers. They wanted to get better at their craft. So it wouldn't make sense for me to say, hey, guys, I have uh, got us a leadership development course that we're all going to take this quarter and it's going to be great. That wouldn't make sense to them, right? Because they don't want to be a manager. What's more likely to meet this growth need, growth needs strength moder moderating factor is to do what we did, which is we leverage OKRs and every quarter, one of our OKRs would be specifically on how to improve your skills, gain a certification, or learn something that would improve what you could do at the company. And that was meeting their growth needs strength, right? Because they they weren't trying to be managers, they were trying to get better at what they did. And so that's what we focused on. Now, just like I did with the other call outs, the goal of intentionality is to create a remote work environment that is not only functional, but also purposeful. By being intentional in building the foundation, companies can enhance team cohesion, productivity, and overall satisfaction in a remote work setup. So that's why we want to be intentional. And the way that we do that is to be clear and have transparency. Now, why does it matter? This is one key stat that I put here because I think it summarizes what we just talked about talked about. Fully operational communication systems and processes assist in holding on to top talent in companies by up to 450%. Now, my interpretation of this is that it's, it's proof that delivering clarity, being transparent, and moving intentionally in an organization will give you the foundation you need to have a fully operational communication system and processes. And as a result of this, you will have built a more remote organization or a more engaged organization that fosters employees who stay and stick around longer because they know what is expected of them. They know how to communicate. They understand the remote work policy. They have the right infrastructure and they have the right organizational structure to make sure that all these are driving into their ability to be more engaged in work. Now, some of the other things that, or some of the other stats that I saw that I didn't add to these, these slides were online collaboration tools and digital workspaces facilitate increased productivity by up to 30%. This is from 
an article on Go Remotely. It's collaboration and engagement statistics for remote workers if you want to look it up. But also there's extremely, or, or th this is another stat, extremely connected teams demonstrate a 21% increase in profitability. And so I think if we take those three stats there, the 450%, the online collaboration tools and digital workspaces productivity up by 30% and the 21% in incre increase in profitability, those are all combinations telling you that if you do this appropriately, you will have a more engaged remote workforce. So I know that this was for a presentation that I did live and we took questions and answers, but if you have any questions as you're viewing this video, drop them down in the comments and we'll answer them or, or we'll answer them in the comments or we'll go ahead and provide you with a, another video or documentation or links to articles that we use to build this. So that is it as far as creating a, an engaged remote workforce. I will say if you are interested in learning about Grapevine software, the virtual office platform for your remote and hybrid workforce, feel free to reach out to us on the website, grapevinesoftware.io or reach out to us info at grapevinesoftware.io and schedule a meeting or just send us an email saying that you would like to learn more. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you on the next episode of Untangled Vines, Redefining the Rules of Work.